Good morning. Morning, welcome back to a new chatty video. Shall we see if anyone can guess what we're going to be talking about today? Oh, I wonder. <laughs> um, we are going to chat about California road trips, but also road trips in general. Um, we get asked quite a lot about how do you plan your road trips? Have you got any videos on planning your road trips? Somebody asked me that the other day and I thought we did and we don't. Don't we? I filmed it on my old channel. Uh, we don't have anything on this channel at all. Ooh. So we're going to address some little tips of how we sort of like plan hotels and things like that. Yeah, we have absolutely no notes. So this is a true Aiden Lisa live, not live. Uh, so we will just see where this goes. Um, we also had a bit of a fail <laughs> with our first California road trip video, didn't we? Yeah, those who follow us on Instagram would have seen that we posted that we were going to be... Um, uh, what's, what's the word? Re-editing. Yeah, well, I've got the old California road trip on our old my, uh, my old lifestyle channel, so it doesn't really belong there anymore. Um, so we thought we'd bring it over, didn't we? Yeah, it's something we've spoken about for quite a long time and it was just really when to do it. I mean, basically, it's time more than anything, wasn't it? <laughs> but because our, our um, most recent series has just finished, it seemed probably the perfect time. We'd love to bring those trips over onto this, this channel. We have got others as well. Um, and I just feel it's the right place for them. And because they're not date, I mean they're dated, they're 2019, but the, the content doesn't go out of date. Tips will still be the same. Yeah, going, you know, where to stay, Fisherman's Wharf, um, getting the cable car, different, you know, like touristy things, what to see. It's not like Disney where different things change, rides yeah. change, the content is still the same. The Highway 1 is still the same road. <laughs> Golden Gate mean? Bridge is still there. Yeah, the, <laughs> going onto Alcatraz. The Bixby Bridge, yeah, so, so they're, all, they're all things that, I mean, yeah, okay. Oh, and also you think of like going to Hollywood as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's things there that we felt that it was beneficial and people that watch us, we like to share what we've learned. So hopefully it will do. So yes, the trip is 2019. Um, but there's still quite a lot of relevant information in them. But yeah. just going back to what you said before about planning a road trip, um, we felt like we haven't, we've touched this before, that since obviously um, COVID, we haven't really planned a trip properly. We've been really How lazy. we used to. Yeah. We used to love planning. Well, you no. guys know we used to, because we used to talk about it all the time, about going to Starbucks and... So yeah. Just their polish off. And... That was probably just as much fun as actually doing the trip. We would actually take just as long to plan them, if not longer. Yeah. Well, literally from when we finished the trip to, to the next one. Two years. <laughs> and, and sometimes it was so exciting. I think the first road trip we did was we flew to New York. That was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah. Flew to New York, we drove to Washington, and then on to your dad's. Mm. Now, originally we were thinking of like flying because it was like a good 1,000, 1,500 miles. And I just said one day, well, why don't we drive? Mm. Actually make it into a road trip. We'd never done it before. And we absolutely loved it, didn't we? We really did. And I think that sort of set the foundations of how we like to, to sort of plan, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So I think many hours of looking at Google Maps, mm -hmm. um, places to visit, places to stop. Um, you're really the one that does most of the research. You'll mm -hmm. be there and you'll come to me in the evening and say, I've just found this place, I've found that place. We could stop here. And what about this one? Or if we go this route? So, I mean, you, you love it, don't you? I really do, yeah. Sorry, I've got terrible shoulder ache today. So if I look a bit weird, it's because I'm really uncomfortable. I've got no support on my back Aww. on these bar stools. And I also wanted to point out that I'm now an independent travel agent. So if you're interested in booking any travel, please do message me that my email address is below as I'd be happy to give you a hand planning your trips. Um, yeah, so we thought let's talk about California, let's talk about some trips, road trip planning and all that kind of thing mm. today. Yeah. Where would you like to start? Well, should we start maybe from the beginning about how we decided what to do on this trip, the California trip? Yeah, that's, I think as well, when you're planning a road trip, you have got a certain amount of time and depending on where you're going, there's a lot of things that you could potentially see. Mm. During the Highway 1 from San Francisco, whether you're stopping at LA or going on to San Diego or anywhere else, there's a lot of things to see. And unless you're doing it over weeks and weeks, which most of us aren't, 
you've got a limited amount of time where you can stop. Yeah, so we, I think, probably had a bit of a wish list, didn't we? Mm. We had seen places that we wanted to kind of do. One, one such one was whale watching. Yeah. Another one was Yosemite. Yeah. Um, that's not quite but it's the, not quite that's there that's more over there yeah there. there were some <laughs> others as we got further down like for example Joshua Tree National Park um, and it's kind of picking or trying to decide on in the time you've got can you actually manage to do what you want to do now if you know the trip you'll know that we didn't do Yosemite but basically because it would have meant we would have just been driving, we'd have gone somewhere for a day, half a day, and we wouldn't have really probably enjoyed it. Mm. We'd have probably wore us, worn ourselves out. So I think basically once you sort of get that wish list, first of all, places, that's where we start from. Yeah, I think also as well, yeah, go through, like for example, a question that we get asked, how long do you think you need in San Francisco? Um, well, let's start with actually, do you drive from LA to San Francisco or San Francisco to LA? That's a popular question as well. It really is. I've done both. I did the LA to San Francisco before we were together. I did the highway one then and then we did it the reverse. And I personally think the reverse is so much better. What, San Francisco to LA? Because you're driving on the coastal side, whereas when you're driving up, you're on the inside. Hmm. So you don't get the views, you're taking photos, but over cars. Yeah. And it's not as easy to stop off as well. Yeah, a lot of the stopping places on the Highway 1 are on... The coast side. On the coast side, yeah. so you can easily just sort of pull over. And I think it's really nice actually as well to start your trip in San Francisco. We did three nights and then work your way down. Especially if you go to Disney because then you're ending it in Disney. I think also another consideration is look at... I mean, there's, that's one part of it, but the other side is look at costs as well. Mm -hmm. Because flying in or out of different mm -hmm. times, different places, that, that could make a difference as well. So. There's lots of things to consider. But I think as far as the actual road trip goes, I think starting north and working your way down south. Yeah, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was, we saw a lot. Mm. There's lots more we could see and do. Um, but it was obviously making those decisions of the parts of the trip where we were just trying to get from A to B. Also, also as well, the, you know, working out how long you need in places. We did San Francisco, we then stopped overnight on the Highway 1, didn't we? Yep. We had an, an LA stop, then Anaheim um, for Disney, and then we went on to Florida as well. Yep. And it's just working out how much time you need. For us personally, it was stopping and working out your wish list for those particular destinations, so breaking it down. Mm. So San Francisco, we knew we wanted to go to Alcatraz. Yep. We knew we wanted to obviously spend time around the Golden Gate Bridge, go the other side, didn't we? Yes. Uh, we just had a little like tick-off list of all the little touristy things we wanted to do. Then you make up a little bit of a loose itinerary, and then you think, oh, because originally we were only going to do two nights. Mm. And obviously you're not arriving until tea time. Off, yeah, late afternoon, so yeah, tea time, so. We went down to Fisherman's Wharf that evening, but you're really tired. Um, and yeah, we just realized actually we didn't have quite enough time. And we ended up making a really nice itinerary, didn't we, for our three nights and it worked out perfectly. I think also by doing the three nights, we then set off really early mm, the morning after because we did have Again, because the plans we made, we did need to be in Monterey by nine o'clock in, in the morning. morning. So I think we left about five o'clock, so didn't we? if we'd have done those two nights yeah. and had to do that, realistically, we'd have really only been in San Francisco more or less for like one day. I mean, we didn't do everything in San Francisco. We really wanted to do the Disney, what Disney Museum, didn't yeah. we? We didn't get time for that. We didn't get to see the painted ladies. No. Uh, there's only so much you can do though. But, but what we did, I, I thoroughly enjoyed. I mean, it's Coit Tower we did. Is it mm. Coit Tower? Yeah. Coit Tower. Um, did the cable car. Um, Baker Beach. Yeah, there's there's lots. Alcatraz, we, I mean, we, Ghirardelli's. Yeah, we drove over the Golden Gate. We walked underneath it. We walked along it. We just, actually, we walked along Took part pictures of it. away from it on Baker <laughs> Beach. <laughs> yeah, we sort of did a bit of everything, but it was so much fun. But, oh, and we did um, Lombard Street as well, didn't we? I think it's the same kind of approach. Like, if you've, you've watched our Disney trips and our planning trips for Disney, we'll say it in a park, just don't expect 
to do everything. Mm. Enjoy what you do. And I think that really, that mantra is something to take on for any trip. I know that may sound common sense, but I think you could easily get caught up in that, that whirlwind of thinking, we've got to try and do everything. Uh, but you've got to enjoy it as well. We loved it though. We so had, the kids we loved absolutely it, loved they? it. So. Yeah, it was a real special trip. But then, yeah, and then I think you've got then the drive down to LA if you're doing that. Yep. And that again, there's so much to see and do. I read up um, some trip reports on the Dib. Um, that was, oh, got post, two seconds. Just laughing, that was AIDS drill bits arriving. <laughs> He's not very happy about it. I wanted them to come back five o'clock so you have to do anything. <laughs> Right, I forgot what we were talking about, the drive. The drive, yeah. Yeah, so I went on to the Dib, which is a great place to go and get inspiration and ideas if you're planning your trips. I'll leave the link down below. And um, yes, and reading other people's trip reports of how they done. Um, my friend Kate had done one, I think the year before us, and that was really, really helpful. All oh, the other tip as well, and I remember it was Kate's trip report that made me think about the parking in San Francisco. Oh, yes. That's something I wanted to share with you. Please, please, when you're booking your hotel in San Francisco, check out the parking costs. If you have a car, that is, of yeah. course, yeah. Um, yeah, if you've got a car. They are really, really expensive. And one of the reasons we actually chose our hotel, there were two reasons. One, it was free parking, which seems to be almost unheard of, mm. especially right down on Fisherman's Wharf. And we also had a suite, so we had, it was a really, really good price. And the children had a huge room, didn't they? Yeah. Off of our room. So it was we, almost like the lounge area, wasn't it? Yeah, so, dining room in then, there. Then we had a nice room as well, which was a really big room. Yeah. So yeah, that was lovely. And um, yeah, they had two big double beds each as well. There was so much space. Mm. So that was perfect. Um, especially with them being older teens, we sort of knew we were going on a long road trip. Um, everyone's going to need their space. So that worked really well. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, that choice of hotel, I mean, regards to the parking, because it's, I mean, US you, you, hotels, places you stay, you know there are things like hotel fees and other charges, resort fees, but in San Francisco we heard some, some, some quite sort of uh, astonishing costs, almost the cost of staying at the hotel itself. But it was things like, as well, that you would get charged more if you had a larger SUV, which we did. But then also you can have these hidden costs if you actually leave the hotel. So say like, we took the car out one day to drive over the Golden Gate Bridge, go and have lunch, didn't we, on the yep. other side. We would have had, in these other hotels, we would have had extra charges for taking out and bringing back. Yeah, I can not say I understand it, but I, can't. I, I can <laughs> see if you're in a hotel such where you've got to, they've got to get your car out for you, mm -hmm. kind of thing. I get that, but there there wasn't just like a minimal. It was quite a hefty cost as well. So and I think Kate looked at one and it was going to work out like seventy five dollars a day. Yeah, and I think or, it, or maybe she didn't even realise. Um, Kate, if you're watching, let me know. But I know, thanks to you, we avoided it. It was something costs. we did check, so yeah. just worth checking. If you've got a car, of course, which I thought if you're doing a road trip, you probably are. Well, unless some people might unless you pick yeah. the car up there and then you start from there. So yeah. we've done that. Like New York, we didn't pick the car That's up until true. we left. Yeah, um, but no, really, really look into hidden costs in California. And I think also you made a good point there about the hotel in San Francisco. Um, we just arrived after a long journey. We wanted to have that space and it was important that we could sort of rest properly. Um, but then that meant on other parts of the trip, like when we did overnight stays, like on the way down, I think, mm. uh, was it Canberra? Yeah. We had like a, just a, I say room. It was a nice room, it was really but nice. we were just obviously all four of us in that one room. That was so only one night. That was just one it? night. So again, it's picking and choosing like when you need to have, like what accommodation may suit, mm -hmm. at what time. Um, because, I mean, yep, yeah, could manage, I guess, in one room the whole time, but sometimes you do need that space, don't you? I think that's something as well we've always been very aware of when traveling with teenagers, mm -hmm. is that everyone needs space and also the privacy as well yep. side of things. And that's something that we have paid a little bit more on the accommodation because we knew it would have a big impact on our trips. So mm. when it comes to 
um, like picking your accommodation, that's really something to think about. But in some ways, talking of Florida here, the first number of trips we went, we obviously had Bahama Bay. Mm. Perfect. It was inexpensive, mm -hmm. but we had the three bedrooms. Yeah. So it was Lots perfect. Of space. So far cheaper than a hotel room. Yeah. Um, and it was our own essential apartment. So. Yeah. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out more expensive, does no, it? No, not so, I think on road trips though, when you generally yeah, got you hotels, don't have those kind of yeah. It's normally yeah. hotels on road trips, isn't yeah. it? So, um, but yeah, and so with regards to choosing where you stop, what you see on Highway One, because there's a lot of places. Um, like Aid said, we drove. Our first stop was Monterey, and we wanted to do whale watching. We wanted to experience things that we wouldn't be able to see in other places. So like lots of people said to us, oh, you've got to go to the aquarium in Monterey. Whereas, or there was different museums that people said we should go to, but we kind of wanted to see the naturalness, didn't we? The country itself. So yeah. things like the whale watching. Um... Whereas an aquarium's amazing. And it's great if you've got loads of time, isn't yeah. it? But if you are just spending a it's few hours. It's prioritizing, isn't it? Yeah, prioritizing. To us, we could go to other aquariums. Um, whereas whale watching, we there's not many places where you can go that we've been to mm. um, that you can actually go on a little boat and go and have loads and loads of humpback whales swimming alongside I know, you. I know. So it, it, it's I think yeah, prioritising picking the things that you um, yeah would would want to see, mm -hmm. um, and also like how long maybe they take because the whale That's watching true. was really a whole morning, morning wasn't, wasn't it? Because yeah. we knew obviously then we had to be back on the road again mm -hmm. for, for life. I can't remember where we stopped next. We then drove on. Sorry, I've got a hair attached to my eyelash. We drove on to Nine Mile Ride. It starts at Monterey. Nine, no, no, Seventeen. 17. <laughs> 17, you're thinking of something else. I am, I know what We've I'm thinking of. We've moved from there. <laughs> oh, 17 miles, a bit longer, isn't it? It is, yeah, 17 mile ride. <laughs> we did it all in the fog, so it wasn't yeah. as picturesque as it may have been, but it was still a really fun experience. Yeah, uh, and it was it was around the Pebble Beach area, um, yes. and any people that are golfing fans will know Pebble Beach. Um, but there's this this drive. Is it is it classed as like a national park? Oh, I don't know actually. You but have to put actually it might be because you have to pay. You have to pay. I don't think it's a national park because we went on to uh, another national park okay. and we had to pay again. So mm. basically, 17 miles. It's along the coast and there's just lots of lovely, beautiful places to stop and see. Uh, different. Um, oh, just trying to think what they're. Beaches. Cert was, was there one pop? Was it was there seals in? What was there one part? Squirrels. The squirrels, Beach yeah. Beach squirrels. <laughs> Friendliest squirrels you've ever seen. Yeah, they were in people's buggies. They were trying to get in your car. Yeah. <laughs> they were little vests, weren't they? <laughs> but they were so cute. But that was quite nice because it was kind of like stop off, have a look, get back I, in the car, drive on. I think that was on. the highlight for Holly, actually. It was, yeah. <laughs> she loved that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just, I mean, that was just something you had found, didn't it, that we wanted yeah. to do. It was a bit um, of a late add-on, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So where did we make our way after that? Then, well, we worked out as well. We had um, a place to stay. That ha how we chose our overnight stay for Highway 1, obviously you've got a huge, great big stretch, and I worked it from Monterey down to our Airbnb in Hollywood. So you kind of work out where it's halfway. And the original place I chose, um, I can't even remember what it was. It was quite built up. And I thought, yeah, this is going to be brilliant. There's loads of restaurants and all that. But actually then, the more I looked into it, they were all a bit of like your, what is it, your Motel 8? What's mm, the... Super yeah, 76, they, they were is all it? Just or just a little bit like that. Yeah. And they didn't quite sit comfortable with me. I've seen too many horror movies. And it was all like your dominoes and your fast Dirty food. Dirty swimming pools. Yeah, <laughs> where somebody's died. <laughs> that kind of thing. And I thought, no, I don't know. So I'll have a little look around. And then a little bit further out, I found Cambria. And it was just so pretty, really beautiful, just what we wanted. It was still your little motel type places, but really, but it was really more, cute. It, it was more sort of, not say it wasn't boutique-y, but it was more like that, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it felt like if Snow White were to have a motel, that, yeah. that's where we stayed. It was really cute, wasn't it? I'll leave all the links below. And, and although, although there wasn't a vast amount of places to eat, like within walking distance, that's the last thing we wanted to do. We'd been driving for so long, we just wanted to just grab something maybe quick, easy, um, and just enjoy and just a, a, a place to relax. 
It was just perfect. I think we grabbed pizza, didn't we? Yeah, we had. We stopped off at Elephant Seal Beach um, just before. It was about 15 minutes before that, Ooh. but it was so pretty. And we literally, there was like a road just in front of all the hotels. So it was like hotel access only because there's lots of little motel -y places along there. And we just, so it was just like a single track road. And that's where you just cross the road and you're on the boardwalk on the beach. And it was just a natural beach. No kind of like cafes or piers. It was quiet, wasn't it as well? Really quiet. And so we watched the sunset. We watched the sunrise in the morning. And then, like you said, we got pizza delivered in in the evening in our room. And we actually, breakfast was included. And it was a really nice breakfast there, wasn't it? Um, this, this is something else as well to consider. That if you've got a particular time to be somewhere... Mm. Um, when you're on the, on the road or on holiday, you're always going to need to eat, always have to have breakfast, dinner, lunch, whatever. Um, because breakfast was included, it was kind of like a buffet breakfast. You so, just go and help yourself. So it meant that we knew that that wouldn't take us that long. Yeah. Whereas along actually the Highway 1, it's fair to say there aren't really too many places to stop it's not like in orlando going down the 192 it really is and there being your chain after chain after chain there's no chain it's not really like that at all so i mean we haven't been for four years so unless i doubt they popped, popped up, doubt they popped up. No. during covid well, i'm sure there are places um, there's cute places but it just meant then that we didn't have to think that we've got to find somewhere for breakfast and then that added kind of time um so setting off having had something to eat was obviously obviously a great mm. uh, a great benefit really so the other thing is as well it's just reminded me that from the drive from like leaving monterey down to like cambria there weren't i think there was just one and that was a private company a private um garage to get mm. fuel so make sure you've got plenty of fuel for that drive i think we'd even looked at the distances in mm. between um, the stops as well just to see just to make sure and also looking on Google Maps to see where the fuel the petrol stations were so that we knew we would fill up every time we could yeah um, so it's things like that one other thing as well that we did um, in San Francisco and we did this we've done this on most of our road trips mm. is that in San Francisco we went into AT&T and actually bought a sim card that's a good, that's another question um, we get asked a lot it's a about question we get i just phones. made me think about that we're talking about the actual driving on the road excuse me and the petrol station um we picked up a sim card i mean i'm i'm fortunate that my uk uh, o2 um account is still has global roaming so i can use it wherever mm -hmm. but we just wanted an AT&T SIM card that we knew then if we were anywhere, we would have, I mean, as long as we had signal, of course, mm. but we'd obviously have a US phone number. So if there's anything we needed to do, obviously there would be no issues. I mean, of course, if we did break down, we know we can call, but also people can call us as well because they're not calling an international number. Yeah. Uh, especially true. when you're driving. I mean, this trip wasn't as long, but when we've done it before, when you're driving, say, 1,500 miles, mm. um, it's important. It's just having that, that like, what do you call it? Um, security. Security blanket. That's that sort of um, thingy blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. So that's another thing we did. Um, and we made sure we were stocked up well with drinks and snacks. Yes. Because like we said, there's no chains. You can't just pull over into a McDonald's for a drive yeah. through. There was nothing. Yeah. No Starbucks. Nothing like that. So from that point on, we made our way down to... I, I also wanted to actually talk about the other places that we stopped This is at. what I was going to talk about, but yeah. But even before that, because again, there's so many different places to stop and see. So what I tend to do, if you go onto Google Maps, you see like little points of interest. Mm. Go and have a look at those, favourite them so you can come back and see and pick and choose what you want to see. So if you look at our Google Maps, you'll see there's all these little yellow stars. Mm. So if you look for it, it looks like there's a, it almost looks, you know the route we've gone because of course you can see all these yellow stars on the route. I mean, one I remember in particular was, was it the McQuay or McQuay Falls? That. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, I can't remember what national park that was, but it's a, a waterfall, so but you can't actually access the beach from above. I think obviously if you got a boat, you could do, but it was so beautiful. I've seen quite a lot of other people have been there mm. as well. Um, it was just so nice to see. Um, it's a nice way to take little breaks as well. Isn't yeah, it? Th that was the other thing. I mean, we yeah. only stopped off for like half an hour type of thing. But Stretch your legs. It was nice. It was yeah. nice. So Yeah, no, so things like that. Prioritise what you want to see and things like that. So then if we talk then about leaving Cambria, 
Yep. We drove then the next day on to Hollywood. Yes. And we just made one stop. I think it was, was it like an hour and a half? Something oh, like yes. that? Um, yeah. Or maybe like four hours drive, but then we broke it up in the middle, something like that. And but more the fact of to see somewhere else. Yeah. It was a place on the list that we wanted to spend a few hours. It was a place that I stopped off on my road trip in the 90s and that was a little Danish town called Solvang. Mm. I was so excited for you all to experience it, wasn't I? Yeah. It was really cute. It, yes, yeah, it was, wasn't it? So some again, great something cakes, different. Some Danish pastries. Yeah. And it was just nice just to get out for an hour. It was free parking in the town. And just, yeah, if you're doing that road trip, I really recommend stopping there for yeah. a nose. It's really cute. And it is actually, I think it, I read it there, it's the largest Danish settlement outside of Denmark. Mm. Okay. Maybe that's where Holly got her love for Denmark from. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> but no, we really enjoyed that stop, didn't we? Yeah, and again, it, it's just, the, again, like you said, it's a, it's a break kind of thing, but then you're, mm. all, you're again seeing things that you, you wouldn't see. Yeah. So. Now, when it came to Hollywood, that was a difficult one to decide oh, how yes. long to stop. We didn't even want to go to Hollywood. We've both been a couple of times previous. And not had, not say great experiences. We just, we just went fast. It's, it's almost feels like a bit of a one and done type yeah. of thing, isn't it? It's Very true. But? Our son wants to work in movies as a career and we knew it was really important to him. So this stop was for him, wasn't it? Yep. And we absolutely- Probably the longest part of the trip. I don't know. How, was it five, six nights? Mm, we loved it. Yeah, was it six or seven? Yeah. Five or six. We saw Hollywood in such a different way to how we've ever seen it previously. And I think for a lot of this was down to where we actually stayed. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, with obviously having things like Airbnbs, etc. I think it's really, really opened up different um, opportunities mm. and places that you can stay. We had looked at some, um, well, I think a lot, well, you'd looked at quite a few different places from places near to where we could access or close to like the walk, the, mm. the Hollywood hike sign, some really cutesy places. Um, uh, we did, did we look at hotels as well? No, I never looked Was at hotels. I, want, I wanted again the kids to have their, their own space. space. Yeah. And you found this, this Airbnb yeah um it was a two bedroom um didn't really explain where it well knew it was in hollywood but didn't really explain what it was but it was basically a two bedroom airbnb not really knowing what to expect and being the way that we are we were going onto google maps trying to find out well where is it it was and, really tricky wasn't and it, it was so difficult and we realized why it was so difficult because it literally was um a converted garage of one of the huge mansions on uh, there's a road called june street gosh you've got a good memory yeah june mm -hmm. street now it's you think of hollywood and you think of doing the star tours and things like that there's you've got your mulholland drive you've got your sunset boulevard you've got all the place like that june street there are some astonishing houses on there beautiful and it is actually uh i think quite a few famous people have and probably do live down there but yeah they had got an airbnb it was a two bed like converted garage it was like a triple garage um, and it was amazing. It was lovely. I mean, it, it was perfect for us. It felt so safe as well because we had yeah. to like access through a, a, like a combination lock, didn't through we? Through their side gate of their, their, their property. Around the back. But yeah. we had our own privacy. It was all like loads of trees. We had our little courtyard. Yeah. We could walk to a Starbucks. We could we? park on their drive. Yeah. And it was so beautiful. The walk to the Starbucks, it was just along these mansions wasn't it? Mm. Just beautiful gardens. And yet we were in walking distance of the fame of, what's it called? Walk of Fame. Walk of fame. Yeah. We loved that So stay. I think actually stay, where we were staying was probably the biggest, biggest benefit. And um, the kids had the upstairs, yeah, the whole like the of the upstairs. Almost, yeah, it? the loft. They had their own bathroom, their own beds. It was just perfect. It was lovely. So really it was really nice. Um, it was really nice. Uh, I mean, Touching on, on Hollywood itself, obviously we did have the car, we did get out and drive, but I think we spent that week, was it about six hours in the car? <laughs> and how many miles did we do? Did we say about 30? <laughs> Probably less than that, I think it was. But we did but, go to Santa Monica, we did Venice Beach, yeah. all these things that, you know, the touristy things, all the things that we wanted the kids to see. But there are other things that were really easy to park. Now, this is something else as well. If you're not actually staying in, in, in Hollywood, but wanting to go, I always kind of think, well, where do you park? 
I've done it before, years ago, and I just literally found a place on um, Sunset Boulevard. Was it one of those dodgy and parking? Down the, yeah, down the side. No, 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 oh, it was on, on the road. Oh, I parked. Okay. So I actually parked on the road on the side streets. But we weren't stopping, so I think it was like we could stay there. Okay. I'm sure we could stay there. Well, we didn't get a ticket. <laughs> but we actually parked in, you know where they have the Oscars at the... Um, it's the mall, isn't the it? The Dolby Theatre. Yeah. And there's a shopping centre there as well. So. The, should we say the cinema where they have the, the Dolby Theatre where mm. they have the Oscars. Uh, basically it was the car park for that. But the owner of the Airbnb, she was really chatty. She was the one that told us to, or recommended that to park. Yeah, yeah, so, and it was really easy. It was just like going into like a, a multi-story car park mm. that we'd have over here. You just don't think there are places like that and the prices were reasonable. Yeah. It felt safe, secure. Um, and so if you ever go in or passing through, um, yeah, just just check those kind of places And we out. literally walked from our car out and you're in the Dolby Theatre, aren't you? We had to yeah, walk we down, walked the down the steps. stairs. Yeah, <laughs> it was really that, cool. So. And yeah, so then we enjoyed, we did the Hollywood hike whilst we were there. Yep. Get, if you're doing the Hollywood hike and it's a hot time of year, which it often is in Get California. Get out early. I think we left about seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And coming down, it was about 11 and it was really, really hot. Yeah, also being where it is, there isn't much cover for shade. That's true. So when we were coming back, we were kind of ready that we actually were ready to get back. It was Take water. Plen we had plenty, well, you know us anyway. Mm -hmm. I had my rucksack full of drinks. Um, it's really worth doing though, isn't we it? We did actually do a little detour as well on the way back. Depending on which route you, you take, because there's yeah. different walking routes, we stopped off at the Bronson Caves on the way back. I will leave actually the um, the address of what we put in the sat nav to park. Yeah, so the Bronson Caves, everyone will know what the Bronson Caves are. Are they natural or man-made, this particular part? It's man-made. If everyone remembers the Batman, no, this wasn't the only thing, the Batman series in the 60s. Basically, the Bronson Caves is a tunnel and it was what was used as the filming for the Batcave. Um, for the, um, who was played Batman? I'm I thinking can't. of Adam West. Oh, I was thinking of Adam West, and yeah, that's it. Was he Batman or Robert? He was Batman, wasn't he, I Adam West? I think so. Anyway, it, it was... if we're wrong. And because this tunnel was, was open one end, they basically filmed from one end, and obviously with the, the car coming through. Because he been, could get the speed up to come through. Because there's lots of other, other things being filmed there as well. But that was really cool. I think we actually got that from watching an, um, an Adam the Woo video, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, we saw a coyote while we were there. And we saw a coyote there. while we were there. Yeah, there was a family cool. from California, had little kids with them. And they'd seen it, and they'd never seen one. You would very rarely see one in the daytime. So they were quite sort of wary, weren't they? So if they were wary, we were kind of thinking, well, okay, we're obviously we're never going to approach it. But luckily, it just went off. So, but uh, yeah, That's that was cool. cool. But yeah, so we did we did some really nice things there, didn't we? Went to the farmers market. Yeah, went to the Grove. That's it. Oh, that you, was so memory. so it's nice. Really and good. and the place we went for breakfast was called Marmalade. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, so have a look out for the Grove because there's some nice places to it's eat there. really nice. Um, and so, again, our, our opinion, I have to say, of Hollywood has actually changed. We did do the usual touristy things. We did do a, a Star Tours type of thing. <laughs> I never thought we would, but it was such a highlight. It was really good fun, but it was also a great way to drive around the likes of Mulholland Drive and other places. But the kids loved it. They loved seeing where all the celebrities lived. They loved all the stories. And it's, I think again, when you're planning a road trip, who you're going with, plan around everybody. Make mm. sure there's something for everybody. But it was interesting things as well when we did, although the celebrity houses and things like that, but it was interesting learning about why some of the houses mm. were on stilts. That's now, of course, true. anyone who is a Lethal Weapon fan will know the very famous house um, that was in Lethal Weapon 2. I wouldn't know. It's on stilts and basically, they used to get, was it, they used to get taxed yeah. on the actual square footage, but there was only the actual square footage of land. So they would actually build the houses like on stilts, so none of them were, was actually sort of on the side of the mountain. How did they I stay think, there during the earthquake? I think though? they've kind of stopped that now, haven't they? Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think more maybe safety-wise or anything, but we, there still are some that are there like that. We learned about the Hollywood sign, how it's changed over the years, and like sort of really sad suicides from like yeah. going way, way back. Was it like the 20s, and, yes. you know, when Hollywood was first yeah. sort of becoming a thing? Hollywood land. Yeah, that so was That's what it was before. Yeah. It was Hollywood land. 
um, before. So we've got some really good history, actually. He was really good, the tour guide, wasn't he? Was he was great fun. Yeah, really, really so good. So our, our eyes opened in regard to Hollywood, and we absolutely loved staying there as yeah. well. Yeah, and so. I would go back. There was a couple of things. We didn't get to do um, the Griffiths. Griffith Observatory. Yeah, we got there, we couldn't park, there was an event going on. Yeah, wasn't there was there? a concert going on, so yeah, it was. Yeah, just down the road. And there were certain times when it's open and closed, so it just didn't happen. And again, although disappointing, not much we can do about it. Yeah, so. it's on the list for next time. Didn't we also do Universal while we were staying we there? Universal. So, yeah. staying in Hollywood was great because it was quite close to going to, well, relatively close, wasn't it, to Universal? Yeah. So, and, and again, that was our, our universal fix. And that's how we worked out how long we wanted to stay there by knowing we wanted to do Universal, knowing we wanted to do the Walk of Fame, Hollywood Santa Pike. Monica, exactly. Then you can kind of like work out your itinerary roughly mm. and work out um, yeah. how long you want to be in an area. We then went on to Disney, which was really fun. I don't think we really need to talk too much about that. No, I mean, we, we, get, we got an Airbnb, I think mm. uh, six or seven nights, wasn't it? Again, by that point, yeah, I think, I think we'd week. been on the road for quite a while. And it was nice again having that. Um, we were about a 15 minute walk from the parks. From Disneyland Hotel. Um, sounds okay until you know obviously it's the California summer heat. <laughs> um, but uh, no, we loved that. Uh, we kind of just stayed around that area, didn't we? Yeah. We actually visited. Did we visit? No, we didn't go to where I used to work, did we? No, didn't, we didn't. Ended, too much. We were going to. Yeah. But then the kids weren't really that fast. We've so we been didn't. before. We'd done it before. I'd taken you and I went back yeah. to where we used to go. And, uh, so I think we had a lazy day one day instead, didn't we? Yeah. Which Again, think... it's prioritising. The kids were feeling really tired. So why take them out on a day if, for something they're not that fussed about when actually them having some rest would actually then enhance your days yeah. going forward? Yeah, so no, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly mm. enjoyed Disneyland, um, California and California Adventure, that mm. was amazing. We had a lovely time there, didn't we? So, we really did. Um, yeah, we're not gonna to touch on the Disney side of things too much. It's more road trip today. But uh, we then, um, we... There was a few things we wanted to do in the area, wasn't there? Yeah, so we ended up going to now. the Oh, we went to Palm Springs. Yep, Palm Springs. We did. If you go to Palm Springs, there's a cable car that takes you it's to the top. Aerial Tramway, I think, is what it's called. It's so good. You've done it previously. I've done it a few times, so they yeah. They used to sort of work around there. Yeah. Did you take every guest that came up there? No, I only did it twice. Yeah, because oh, okay. I, I, I worked in um, just south of LA about half an hour in a place called Aliso Viejo, um, near the beach. Um, it was, I wish I'd worked there longer, but I obviously have done some of these things. We did some exploring, so I need some places to go to. Uh, we've been to California ourselves. Um, without the kids. Without the kids, but also that meant that there were places we didn't have to do this time, either because they weren't as good as I remember. <laughs> oh yeah, you said that actually. Yeah, we there was you were a, a bit place, weren't you? oh, there's a place near San Diego on the beach, and I can't remember what it was called now. I forgot It was about really that. cute, but I think it obviously become, uh, Bill, Bill Bauer was one, mm. but we didn't go there. Anyway, um, so now I'll continue there, but Palm Springs got an aerial tramway. Um, it is beautiful. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed that. Buy your tickets in advance and also if you are doing the aerial tramway make sure you get there nice and early. We're always the early birds and uh, we got there first thing straight up on the cable car to the top but when we came back it was sort of like lunchtime-ish. busy. The queue and it was so so hot down there like 40 odd degrees and the queue. Well, 40 degrees plus. You have to get a bus to there from the parking place to the um, cable car and there was just queues and queues of people stood with no shade waiting for the next bus. So also the tramway, you said about being so hot, obviously mm. down below, it is, is it about 8,000 feet mm. or, or more? The temperature, obviously that time of year is not too bad. You can still be at the top and be in shorts and t-shirt. When I was there um, years ago, it was in October. And there was snow at the top mm -hmm. so of course we weren't necessarily expecting that so just be aware of what time of the year you go if you do do the tramway it could be a bit chilly up there Temperature you don't changes. expect to see snow when you've been down in the desert yeah, that's true. and then you go on a tramway and it's absolutely freezing the temperature difference though from Palm Springs to LA oh, was yeah. huge amounts to the point where even we went and um, we went to a diner in Palm Springs just even walking to the car to the diner which was just a it's couple of minutes it? it was just too much and we didn't even want to walk down the road I have never 
Apart from Las Vegas, I've never experienced dry heat like and that. It's a dry heat as well. So mm. like it's a humid heat, it's a dry heat. It really hits you, doesn't it? And then we did the we did a bit of a circuit around um, some of the national Joshua National Tree Park. Yeah. Kids wouldn't even get out of the car, would they? No, it was hot. <laughs> Glad we did it. We had fun. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, they wouldn't even get out of the car every time we stopped. <laughs> it but was too hot. The visitor centre was good there, wasn't it? They got out of the yeah. car for that. That was really informative. But then you can drive around, you get a map, you get given a map, and you go through, um, you can stop off at different rock formations and things. Now, it's worth mentioning, if you do go to any of the national parks, um, you do have to pay. Mm -hmm. I think depending on what state, it can be different because I think sometimes if you pay for one, you get access for seven yeah. days. But it's the same in Florida yeah. as well. It's like six yeah. or seven dollars for your pass. Yeah, so just be aware that when you do go to these, don't be surprised if they do charge you. But it's to go towards it's the to go, Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, and there are all these stop-off places. There's the visitor centers, there's everything, so. And people are so helpful. They, you can get so much information. You get your free maps. Um, so they're definitely worth it, aren't they? Yeah, so at Anaheim, I think we're almost at the end of this now, aren't mm. we? So we, our road trip ended at Anaheim. Um, now, we actually struggled to find a flight, didn't we, to get home from LA? We well, did. Well, I say struggled to find, one at a reasonable price, should we say. We, we wanted to use our miles, that was the We wanted reason. to use our miles and we struggled to get one flying from LA. So, you actually, I don't know how it came about. After but lots of tears. Lo <laughs> you actually had a look and we realised, or you realised, with a few of our miles, um, we could fly to Orlando for I think it was five dollars sixty each. We, yeah we paid twelve thousand miles each and five dollars each to fly from LA to Orlando. But bear in mind that's about a five hour flight isn't it? Yeah and then we got um, yeah then there was loads of miles flights from Orlando so we ended up with um, an unplanned week in Orlando. And it was also a year after we'd signed up for DVC, so it was our first DVC stay. And we had the points there, so the accommodation didn't cost. So the accommodation didn't, so it was just the flight, and then obviously we were able to use our miles to fly back, so. Yeah, it worked out really well actually, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's probably the quietest week we've seen. Oh yeah. Disney. Well, we now, don't need to talk about all that too much, because we've spoken about it before, and it's not part of road trip planning. It's not part of the road trip planning, no, but it's just part of the whole trip anyway, but we had a lovely time, so you think, and we actually got call uh, we give all our trips a name, don't we? Yeah. And this one was West Coast and Double Disney. It was. It's the first time we actually, obviously we went coast to coast and it was the same time, I'm gonna talk a bit about Disney here, it, Galaxy's Edge had just opened in Walt Disney World. Mm. And it had obviously been open in California. So we actually were so fortunate that we were able to go to Galaxy's Edge in California. Yeah. And literally a day or so we did it in, in that was um, cool. Orlando. And it had just opened. And it had just opened. So. We've actually been talking, I've mentioned this recently, that back when we did our first road trip together in 2016, we wanted to do highway, uh, sorry, Route 66 for our big birthdays. We've got big birthdays coming up um, over the next couple of years. And we're actually talking about maybe doing Disney to Disney now, aren't we? Because mm. I think a lot of Highway 66 has kind of like got a bit old. Yeah. So yeah, route, route 66, a lot of what's left is just like the historic parts and what you go on isn't actually possibly what the, mm. well I say the historic parts you don't necessarily drive on as such anymore. Um, so it wouldn't be a true sort of Route 66. Mm. Um, so I think Disney to Disney would be a good one. It would be a good road trip. Mm. Let us know what road trips you've done. We would love to hear, wouldn't we? Yeah, and also any other places. I mean, we know there are a lot of other places. Mm. We mentioned Yosemite at the start. We want to go back to, to the West Coast. We want to, but we'd want to explore it and actually spend the time there. That's the reason why we didn't include it because we felt it would just be too much of a rush. Yeah. It was kind of off the beaten track from where we were wanting to get to and we wouldn't have been able to enjoy the time there. Um, um, the other thing when you're planning this particular road trip, San Francisco can also be a lot cooler than LA. Yes. We got very lucky, we had blue skies, which is almost unheard of for yeah. San Francisco. So um, be aware that you might need 
your hoodies it was quite chilly wasn't mm. it and the other thing is when you're looking at all the touristy places some places get really booked up in advance Alcatraz for example we oh, knew yes. exactly the day that the tickets um, went on sale and we got them didn't we there's for example there was only one night tour we wanted to do the night tour so you go in the day it's the last trip tour of the of the um, you the last boat back don't you yeah and so you're the last one there so you get to go out in the sunshine but because it's the last one they actually take you on a full trip around which is the only one they do that particular day and you're there until after sunset aren't you obviously you can come back on an earlier one we took the last one so it was dark when mm. we left it was so quiet there because everyone else had left yeah we kind of had the the island to ourselves it's it so nice like, seeing it like sunset as well it was wasn't cold, it though, it really was it didn't get cold although we, you said we were good with the weather you do notice the difference it did get chilly at night we didn't go prepared for the cold no. when we went out in the evenings but do be aware to grab your tickets because there were signs up saying sold out yeah. went there um we did the same in um new york with the kids we really wanted to get onto the statue of liberty again i bought those tickets as six months in advance i think i can't remember how far in advance as soon as they went on sale but again on the actual day there were signs up saying sold out yeah um, so yeah, be aware and make sure you're in the know of places that you want to go when their tickets go on sale. Yeah, so all about the planning. It is, the planning makes a huge I, difference. I hope this video has been useful, maybe some things that you didn't know, uh, but also if there's things that you do on a road trip, if you've done road trips before, please leave the comments below. We always love to hear and again we can hopefully learn from that and share that information as well. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and fingers crossed the video that was due to go out last week <laughs> will be out next Wednesday. We yeah. decided not to do it part way through the week. We thought, well, it left a couple of days, so we'll leave it till next Wednesday. But thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Let us know if you've got a road trip coming up. And don't forget that if you want any trips booked, let me know. Drop me a line and um, I'll give you a hand. It'll be really, really fun to do. Thank you very much for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.